folks there um, for demos we'll see Siaman is back welcome back Siaman uh, this and 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 new page status demos and topics um, demos Antoine how many demos do you have today 10 uh, maybe one to demo one. the confirmation Zero. email 0.5 or 1.5 one. Okay, Antoine. Jasmine, do you have demos? Do you want to show the user time zone? Uh, we showed. Uh, I think we showed it uh, last week. Yeah. Didn't we show the time zone setting? We didn't show the user time zone. Mm, not sure, but yeah. I'm sure because it was not working. It could not work. I saw that. <laughs> Um, and and, and uh, we'll see on the status what's new. Not sure. Okay. Ah, do I have uh, Git extensions? Git extensions. Git extensions. Uh, documents. I just visited my machine, so I have nothing. I don't have Git extensions. Oh, that's okay. I will use Chrome and GitHub. It's not the best view, but next week. Um, so what do we have? A commits on the dev branch. This way it will be easy to focus on the dev branch. Uh, seven days, let's see, February 22nd. Uh, let's start with fixing layout editor and dialog positioning issue. I'm not sure which one we saw last week, last time. Okay, this can't be that. Um, okay, let's see that. Okay, fixing layout editor and dialog positioning issue. How do I click on this profile? I can't. That's why it's not the same profile picture. You see, it's a different one. Um, allow modify users info without modify password. Oh, I'm like, okay, I get it. I was thinking Orchard 2 and actually it's Orchard 1 here. So that's why I'm confused. I mean, I don't understand these changes. Okay, now I'm, I feel better. Okay. Um, allow modify user with it. And that's why it's uh, old commits. Ah, I don't like this view. Okay, so what did we merge last week? Concurrency everything that was two weeks ago. Update client storage controller because you could not change the media file. Yeah, fix an issue caused by replacing media file by another file with a different file name. So there's a bug. Uh, we added a feature that lets you rename a file name uh, on a, on a media, but there was an issue in a case when you replaced the media file with another one. Then there was a bug. So uh, Hermes fixed it. Yeah, that's it on Orchard 1. I was so confused. I'm like, I don't understand the change. Um, that's it on Orchard 1. Do we have a... What else? No, no other branch that are waiting. Some pull request, but we match what was ready. Uh, we'll see this one Thursday. And the other one have been merged. Triaged, sorry. Uh, okay. Orchard. This view actually prefer my GitHub extension. Ah. 
Oh, you see my emails. Be careful. Um, this, okay, I feel better here. I was working on a SQL to fix a bug that was reported, and this one is up to date now. Good. Much better. I can work here. Seven days, seven days. Host service, Gentile in this branch. Uh, dynamic cache has been merged here. So now it's official. It's in the dev branch. You can use a cache tag helper. Uh, the cache tags in liquid and, and in the resort. Um, this one hasn't been merged. I just fixed some issues. And I think I have some comments on this branch and zip cause and um, have the time to to look at it yet, but soon, unless I miss something, I will check the PRs after. A fixed time zone liquid filter from Jasmin. Because, because last week we uh, Antoine made a demo and we could only see the local time, even though he will use the pipe local, and that's why, because the pipe local was just getting the local time and not converting the time to the local time. So now it's doing it. Um, Azure Media Startup Order, Azure Media, there was an issue with that apparently. Update MBC Module Order, same thing, an order with uh, MBC Module issue. And I assume this is a dev branch. I assume so, okay. Um, this is the user time zone branch, we'll see it later. Improving code comments and documentation for time zones, that's me. Fixing some documentation. You have access to the time zone ID on the site object now. It will return the ID of the time zone, not something that is currently displayed, but it can be useful. Um, and and just various documentation. Oh, and yeah, and documented the method on i clock and i local clock. Okay, and we change some types. And uh, no, that's nice. Um, what else? Um, this is on terrorist branches, we'll see it later. On the dev branch, update to the netcore SDK 21200. So Alexander updated um, Travis and Abbeyor scripts to use a, latest, a later SDK, newer SDK 21200. And uh, when 2.1 will be released, there should be a new one, 21300, something like this. Auto expand left menu from uh, Matthias. Uh, so good stuff on the admin and the menu navigation. And I think this one is just to remember when you ask it to be collapsed or not, and uh, and it won't lose track of it even if you resize the, the browser. So that's nice things. Um, we merged Antoine's PR for date time field. Um, that has the daytime field and it's beautiful and it supports the, the time zone selector for adjustment so the everything is there. Um, so example, example, example. Why well, we might, might show it why well, we we saw it last time but now it's it's working with a local time zone. So much better. And there is nothing to show here. No. And there is no test either. Well, there is documentation, I think. There is documentation that we can show. Is there a readme updated here? Ooh, that's a bug. Ugh. Do I see some documentation? I don't see any documentation. But I updated the documentation. I'm sure. Okay, can't find it. That's weird. Maybe in different. Not in this branch. Not in this PR. Okay. okay. I don't think so. Fixing field access in template. Okay, this is where I fixed it. Okay. Yeah, so someone had an issue with um, how to use a specific field uh, to render in a view. And um, and then it showed that we are missing documentation on that, so I added some documentation. So to access or render the shapes for a field that is added to the content type directly, the part name is equal to the content type. Just to say that if you need to access 
Uh, so this, yeah, this is in the section called um, shape differentiators uh, to know what is the name of a shape in a zone, like model.content is a zone, and how can you access the different shapes inside. So if you want to access the a specific type fields section, is the name of the content type or the part, uh, like dot .article in this case article. And if you want to access the field shape, then it's part dash the field name. So article dash description, for instance, if you have a text field called description in an article content type. And because this is a set of shapes written from the field, you can pipe it to shape render to render this field explicitly at some location. Or because you have access to this shape, this shape has a property called field, which is the actual field the shape is rendering and the text field has a text property. And this is documented also in the page what at least all the fields that we have. Um, so for instance, you have the text field here and the text field um, what is has a property called text. Um, type the, sh the shape type is text field. So we'll be able to see it there after. And the view model is display text field view model. So when we do that it's a display text field view model. Okay, this is the shape class type, and you can see here dot field dot text because the um, where is it the the, the, the the display HTML field yeah it's this uh, actually what is said what he said is that yeah. Convention for a field view model is to also expose these properties. So every field view model will have the field property, the part property, the content part field definition property. And the field in this case is a text field. And what it tells you is that the text field has a text property. Okay, that's what it does. Um, and for an HTML field, you have an HTML property um, at the field level and at the shape level, which have different things, the processed HTML once all liquid tags are processed, and for the date time, the display date time field, it has a um, local date time, which is a date time but localized. Well, localized in the current time zone. Okay, so you can do model.field.value to get what has been stored, the UTC value, or model.local date time to get the, the one that is converted to the local time zone. Yeah, so just to show that now the answer was answered. The, the question was answered why, with documentation also. Um, so this one on dev. And then we have, this one has been merged this morning, Azure Data Protection. So this is adding um, data protection key rings storage in Azure Blob Storage with uh, this feature. This has been merged, I will see it later. Uh, fixing no reference exception when setup form is invalid. Yeah, there was a bug with the setup form. It was not, uh, but it has been fixed twice. We'll see later. This was a temporary issue. Fixing resource CDN URLs and integrity uh, from Albert. We fixed all the URLs for all the, 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 the scripts and resources we were using, adding the debug ones also if they were not missing, and also adding the and the hashes um, for the CDN integrity thing for all the script we are using. Very nice. I think one of them had a wrong hash and then was failing to be loaded. Uh, fix launch settings from Albert again to have VS Code work um, better. And maybe not just VS Code actually, also Visual Studio. This was an issue that was reported in another PR and we had asked the dev to uh, file a different issue because it wasn't related with the PR. And I was not sure about it. Now it's fixed. On dev branch, we have a renaming settings group ID to SMTP. Okay. We have lots of commits directly to dev. Build editor context. Okay. Maybe I broke SMTP settings with another fix possible. Fix admin footer size and resize responsive. This was a PR, so fixing, yeah, the, the size was too big, so just man fixed it. Um, fixing log task activity in the workflow. 
so we'll trust him oh yes because one activity was expecting was failing to evaluate some script because it was not actually expecting some script but it was evaluating it at some script it should have been an expression um, so he fixed it and then 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 this morning I merged some PRs so display the draft of content attempts for list part in admin so Antoine um, is now returning two shapes for the list part one for the, for the admin side and one for the front end the front end will only use the published items and the, the admin one will display also the, the items which are um, draft um, dynamic cache documentation from Chris uh, again from a question on the forum uh, we saw that something was not documented so the solution is to add some documentation some examples on how to, to use the cache dependency uh, properties so that's good that should be the, the the official answer so when someone has a question on the forum okay let's write some documentation for it and point you to the to that um, then we merged um, this is a fix I on setup if something is bad um, at first then it won't try to load the settings files if it's empty or not existing um, so just to check because there was there were some issues sometimes with that and this is merging the storage data protection module um, and you see some example on how to configure it um, so that's good connection string container name so you can configure the container name on Azure Blob Storage for your data protection keys. These ones are used for um, encrypting data and also for anti-forgery tokens. Um, so when you use multiple nodes, you need to have a common location to store them. Okay, by default, it's storing on app data folder, so it will work uh, for a single machine. That's fine. It will be independent pertinent. If you are using app, Azure App Services, it will also work because the folder will be shared across all the nodes. But if you are using a VM, then you need a, a central repository. And in this case, it will work with Azure Blob Storage. And anyone can copy the implementation to provide other uh, services. The nice thing with that is that it's just wrapping the middleware that already exists in, uh, in ASP.NET. Uh, packages um, okay then we have some active ten, uh, active uh, tenants active branches from Jean Thierry for instance who's working on um, making tenants configuration from the application much easier and also adding more features so the current state is that let me show you um, so it's on should call not this page but the pull requests so this is very interesting tenants configure from the app so configuring tenants fr tenants from the app is two different concerns the first concern is to be able to um, define what are the tenants of an application uh, today we support a JSON file, tenants.json, where you can define uh, the list of tenants and their modules and their prefix and everything. Um, this is optional. By default, Orchard CMS will store everything in the app data uh, sites folder. This is the second thing. But some uh, users might want to define tenants in the code level. So that's one concern, and I, um, I think this already exists. This is uh, Nick's main concern. Uh, then Kevin um, wanted to be able to manage tenants uh, globally and their configuration globally from the host application by setting specific service implementations and also defining custom middlewares and also enabling features for all the tenants. Uh, from the host application and not so that you don't need recipes to do that but you might want all your tenants to have the um, a specific feature enabled so you can do that from your app now and uh, Chantier has been in different cycles to try different settings and sorry syntaxes to to enable that and this is the latest that it should look like um, and I will just give you an a bit of what uh, I had a meeting with him about designing that so there will be three different or more later add orchard so this is your default project and um, what we do is we do a dot add orchard CMS okay and when we do add orchard CMS it will itself call um, 
add object core with some services. So core is the one that has the, the least number of elements inside. Like there is no MVC, uh, there is no theming, there is no anything. It's just multi-tenancy and modules. Then you have you have an add orchard. Okay, so the orchard core here has nothing to do with orchard core version, but it's just the core of the orchard framework. So like MVC core. Um, then add orchard will use add orchard core and add um, and add some things that have to be defined. I'm not sure what what we decided and what he did already. We'll see later. But like it could add theming and and uh, let's say MVC, okay? And then well, not MVC in this case. And then Orchard CMS using Add Orchard plus MVC and many things that the CMS needs, like authentication, admin module, things like this. Data access, okay? So we have different levels of uh, basic middleware and services that you want to use. And also on top of that, you can define services for um, for the tenants, specific tenants or all tenants, and you can say, oh, all the tenants will have liquid views or will have um, a specific module or specific feature. Like uh, So do we have examples here? Uh, you see here, with default features, Orchard setups, you can say that when there is no feature, you use this setup module to start. The tenants and this is what we do today in the, the CMS. Uh, but you could say that all the tenants have also a specific uh, set of features that will always be enabled. Um, so it yeah, is working on that and that looks pretty good so far. Um, so some progress on that. Uh, forms workflow. Oh, sorry, Sipke, is he here? He's here. I, I can I recognize his. Thank you, Sipke. Uh, <laughs> yes, so you reacted to my uh, feedback. I was mentioning that earlier. I don't know if you were there already. Uh, I just joined. Good, good, good. So this I need to review then. Um, so Sipke is working on the forms widget, so we'll be able to merge it hopefully. Um, this is Antoine that we merged, like uh, list draft and published. We merged it, so we'll remove that. Antoine made a new time field. A time field, okay. Um, Antoine made a created UTC option to be able to edit and show while well, option. He fixed the editor for created UTC, and I assume this is not finished because it's not localized and it should be sorry localized. It's not using the local time zone. Yes, I need to use the, the high clock. Okay, high local clock. Yes. Uh, dynamic cache dog, we merged it. A password feature, this is Antoine working on the password feature. I'll have to test it. There is some changes recently. Uh, this bug has been merged. This hasn't been merged because there is still an issue, but I will see if Jasmine can show us how it works. There is a bug. I'm not sure if it's YesSQL. I did a test in YesSQL. You saw that it was open, but I can't find the bug in YesSQL, so there is something else somewhere. Uh, oh, and it made me realize that it's the code that we are using to manage the uh, to manage what to manage users and the and the user entity is very bad. It's so too complex. We need to refactor that. Maybe I will do it in this branch. Just, I will see. I will show you. Um, okay, demos. Demos for whoever has demos. Antoine, you want to start? Yes. Show us what you want. You've done many things, so. is a presenter. Okay. So I will demonstrate the email confirmation. Um, so uh, you can check this in the registration settings in the admin. And there is a warning because um, if you previously had uh, uh, some users, you have to be careful because uh, they, uh, you have to check that, that they are confirmed. You should just add a migration step. Um, 
Yes. At least for temporary, so that when we release the next release, then we'll remove this migration step. There won't be a migration, but for the current users, if we don't want to break them, yes. just load all the users, update, yeah. and save. Yeah. I will try to explain two ways to to update uh, them uh, uh, manually or, or using a, a feature. So, for example, you have this shortcut that explains it when you use identity. Enable a confirmation after our site as users. Paste it in the chat window. Because you can uh, update the database to mark the existing users uh, to be confirmed, or you can, uh, you could make uh, an email and send it to your users saying you have to confirm your uh, the links. So. Oh, I see. You mean like okay, if you enable even is it not okay. I see. Yes. I see what you mean. So if if you have users and your site is running for two years. Yes. And then you enable the feature, then they will be blocked. I see. Yes. And you have to be careful because um, the previous version, we didn't uh, specify that uh, email was uh, confirmed. So if you, you, you are using the new, it will, uh, if it is not checked by default, all email will be confirmed. When you create a user, when you register, and unless uh, you will their email. So I will save. And as explained, we have two ways. Uh, I, I did a feature, and if a user must validate their email and their email are not confirmed, the uh, for each like user, okay. um, yes, exactly. Uh, I add a, a button that will send the email, and you will be able, the user will be able to uh, to confirm his email. Refresh, all users will be confirmed. So, this is one way. The other way, and this is important because, for example, maybe you have only one user that is the admin and that is not confirmed. So, what you can do would be to open your database, go to the table. Uh, yeah, you should check that in the code at least. If if it's a super user, then you don't need um, to be yes, confirmed. Yes, uh, I think it's that, not existing in Orchard Core. Yes, there is a super user in Orchard Core. Oh. And so what just... you can do is go to the user and. Uh, yeah, you don't want to do that. So yeah, control. just just add yeah, at least for the super user. Just. Yes. So that, that's it. Okay, good. Thank you. No time field? Uh, that's on another solution. Uh, okay. Next week, when it's merged, yes. I commented I just want to see the documentation, the, see the table I just showed at the beginning of the meeting. You can just update it with the new time field. field. Okay. Good. Um, a question while you are here and the people are listening. Uh, so the time field you created uses a time span as a member. Yes. That works. Is that the best solution? Could there be issues with that? Um, I was wondering this because 
I explained that I used uh, um, for indexing, indexing I used uh, a dead time uh, because the time span can be okay. uh, indexed. I see. Yeah, that's a good question. What do we do with that thing? Or should we just index it as a string? You, so you do a two string of the time span instead of using a time field, daytime, because I don't know. But then can it be, yeah, it could be sorted also. That will work. Can we do ranges? Yes, we can do ranges on time span uh, serialization. Maybe maybe index it as a string. Maybe easier. OK. Um, and but I'm wondering if it can be an issue when we use it. No, I think that's good because when you serialize it to string, you will see a nice uh, output. It will look like a, a time, so that will work. OK, I, I, uh, that's fine. Uh, no, that would, no, it, it's time span. So um, if I have 24 hours, yeah, you, I, eh, that's weird. I could represent 26 hours. And if I represent 24, there is no notion of AM and PM. I don't know. OK, keep it as a time span. We'll see. It goes. We can always change it if we don't like it, but so far I don't see any major issues. Not less, not more than if we use something as a, a time span. So that will be good. Okay, good, good. Thank you. Jasmine, do you want to show the your time zone? Yeah, sure. Um... Do you know how it works? For sharing? <laughs> no. <laughs> the use of time zone. Yeah. There are still some bugs uh, that I've uh, I found. But... I found them too. Uh, I commented. I know that I am. I I'm I'm, I'm looking into YesSQL to see if it's in YesSQL. But I the main issue I think is because of how we store the things. I will show you the code, and well, I will show the meeting the code to the meeting, and you will see. I'm ashamed of that, but that must be me who did that. But that's very bad. Um, first, the reason what, why it was not working when, when you tried is because I had a service that add singleton here. No, no, and I, I, put I just, I just, yeah, I just tested and I reverted that change yeah. because it was not working at all. Okay. It's scoped. But it then, be scoped. Yeah, yeah, but then the cache here is not working, and that's why? what I. No, I'm it was working for me. It was working for me. Look. What did you break? Nothing. It's well, it's your it's latest okay. code. Uh, maybe maybe uh, the reason is because it's it's instantiating uh, a new I distributed cache here, That's and it's not where where is it instantiating it? It's it, it, it's just here, but yeah, no, it's a, it's just resolving the one from the system, and this one is a singleton, so there is no issue. Yeah, but it doesn't pick it. It, work, it so. works for me. I'm telling you. Okay. I can. I will show you uh, later if you want. Um, okay, that's fine. Uh, so here is the same thing that we showed, I think, last week. We have um, we need to enable the feature, but now uh, I changed this because I had added a new project here that was your Orchard Curl user that um, time zones, and now I, I merged it uh, as a feature inside the user module directly. And it's it's a feature now of uh, if you check in the manifest here, it's a feature of that module. And you just need to go enable this feature. User time zone here is already enabled, but. After that, you're going to be able to see uh, the default time zone that is uh, set on on each users. So and the top have... option and the top option is no specific time zone for this user, which is a default. Yep. Yeah. Which will fall back to the user side time zone. It's a null value there. Mm -hmm. um, if I go back to general and I check here, it's minus five America, New York. Again, they should be different. Just, so to yeah. di take different values and show when you're logged with a user and when you are anonymous, that you see two different things. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to set this to minus eleven. 
here. I'm logged in and it changed to 8.35, 20 p.m., so it's minus 11. And if I log out... Or you open a private window. Okay, also. good. 3.35. Yep. So this works. Cool. Thank you. There's uh, some detail to, to check, but it should be easy to fix. And maybe we could add the browser browser based um, time zone in this feature with a different option, like use use site time zone, use a specific one, or use browser based one. So, oh no, it's not it's not per user. It should be global. It shouldn't be per user. It should be global. Yeah. 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 And it should, it, yeah, it should be a global one, but have, have different priorities, like more prior. Uh, Better priority than the default one, the settings one, but less than the user's one. That would be interesting. Okay, good. Thank you. Beautiful. Um, Sipke, Question you must... about the yeah. uh, distributed cache yes. that I saw there in the field. Yes. <clears throat> so do we have a, a yes. distributed no. cache and a non-distributed cache? Yes. This okay. is very important. So um, the distributed cache, so everything we see here is from ASP.NET packages. Nothing mm -hmm. in Orchard Core, okay? Um, okay. But made by Louis de Jardin, okay? So ah, so it is basically Orchard Core. <laughs> this is basically Orchard. <laughs> but so the distributed cache, so that, that's very important. These are very very well uh, designed um, abstractions. Uh, so the memory we have, you, you can use memory cache and distributed cache. Memory mm -hmm. cache is to be used for something that is not distributed across uh, nodes. So when you have a multi-node instance, the memory cache is unique on each instance. Okay, it's in memory. The nice thing with the memory cache is that you have invalidation tokens that can be from anything, files, time, anything. Uh, signals because we use as I signal like in Orchard One, uh, message bus, whatever you want, and you can. Is that part of the memory cache in a, in in .NET Core? Yeah, this is .NET Core memory cache. Yes, All I right. memory cache from .NET Core, and that's exactly like in Orchard One. Okay, um, mm -hmm. and you can store tasks and everything. Then the distributed cache, whatever you pass to it, it will be serialized. So in theory, you can just pass pass a byte array. So it, everything will be serialized in this read cache. And why? It's because this cache is shared, has to be shareable across all the nodes sure. of your system. It's an out of process thing. Uh, well, it can be. But the default implementation of a distributed cache, if you don't register your own implementation, is the memory cache. Okay. So if you have a single node and use a distributed cache, well, it will store it in memory because this is the simplest thing. But the day you start with having two nodes, you need to enable a service that will use some uh, uh, an external store like the file system, like database, like Redis, anything. Um, .NET Core comes with existing packages that do that for Redis and maybe for the file system, I'm not sure, but I'm sure for Redis. Um, and so you, we can use it. We don't have a module yet to do that. Uh, but we could provide this feature as a module, like Chris did for Azure Data Protection, just a module that enables the correct service. That's super simple. Um, so we could do that. Um, or from your host application, uh, once uh, Jean-Thierry is done with his branch, you can also do it already to do it today, but let's wait for, for uh, Jean-Thierry to do it with his branch, to be done with his branch. You will be able in your host application to say, register my custom distributed cache as I distributed cache. So you will, you won't need a module to that. So the goal with also Jean-Thierry's work is that there are many modules that we are using today that we won't need as modules. We will just be able to configure the app to use something. Okay, like a custom distributed cache implementation or custom Azure uh, blob storage implementation for, for data protection. If that's, it's nice to have modules, but sometimes it's, it's useless to have a module to do that. We can just do it by code. Um, so that, that's, uh, that's the answer. In this case, the user time zone is stored in the distributed cache because it's a serializable value. It's just a time zone ID. Okay. Uh, so there is no reason not to use that. If you have a single machine, it will be in memory, like it will be for memory cache. But if tomorrow you have multiple machines and you will be uh, bounced on different machines when you hit different uh, requests, then you will reuse the same value. And we put it in the cache because it's part of the user profile. And we don't want to have to load the user object 
including his profile, to be able to render any page because he has a, a different time zone. It will be a lot of queries to database for nothing. So it's cached. And it's cached for like one or five minutes. So yeah, one minute in this case, one minute in this case, and then reload it. We could we could increase that. Um, it won't be invalidated. Yes, it is invalidated. No, it is invalidated if you change the the if you edit the user. And then later we'll be able to also invalidate using a, a message bus. Um, it will be no in this case okay and that's there, there's no need for message bus because it's di distributed so whenever we change the value it's changed for all the nodes because it's a distributed cache so that's that's very good we'll just need the signal and the message bus for things which are in memory cache that's it okay very cool so okay. use distributed cache and use um, memory cache a trick for memory cache always defined um, a sliding expiration for memory cache at least Otherwise, it will be kept in memory forever, and maybe create memory leaks if you don't reuse the same IDs. Um, Won't it be automatically uh, nope. evicted at nope. some point nope. if nope. there's too much memory pressure? Never in uppercase, oh. between the okay. quotes, yeah. okay? Never. All right. Okay, it's a dictionary, a concurrent dictionary that stores the ID, and they remove the feature of cleaning it by itself because the, um, it, it's not possible. You can't do that in .NET. Clean something based on memory pressure and everything. That doesn't work. Uh, so they decided not to provide it. You have to define a sliding expiration or an exercise expiration for each memory cache entry. Okay? Uh, and if, anytime someone will write some code in Orchard Core to do that, I will ensure that you are doing it correctly. Uh, that's it. Um, other questions? Let me show you some bad code. It's good to see some bad code sometimes. I will share my screen. It's not bad code. It's bad thinking when we made the user, when I made the user menu. Um, so here, while working on the user uh, time zone module with Jasmine, there is a bug right now with the serialization, and I think the f it, it's it's complicated. It's not that simple, but I think I have a good solution now. Uh, the issue with that thing is, let me open the folder. I will open a new window. So if I look at this thing, um, I need to find the user module user or display driver no user display driver okay so the user the user class is an i entity so it's something that is composable in terms of data and ui but it's not a content item because a content item has localization, versioning, and many things. Fields, content definitions, but the user doesn't have that. But it's still extensible using drivers and user parts. We'll call them profile parts or whatever. It's still extensible. And there is a default display driver, which is this one, which will render the fields of the user and some buttons to manage the, the user, like the save and delete and things like this. Okay. Uh, the user fields is the the raw fields for the user like the password the username the email the roles okay that's what is immutable for uh, for user and um and then because of that there's an issue which is when we update the first time the user we check if it's a new user then we will validate the password and whatever and then we'll call create user async and if it's not a new user then we'll just update the value and it will store it. Uh, the issue with that is if I had another driver like a user time zone um, driver for the user, then the create user async will be called sometimes before the other drivers. And then lots of issues appear. So we have a create user async here because this create user async will validate all the values that the passwords are valid and um, and the other thing that are required and we do that because we can only from the identity ASP.NET identity API we can only create a user a user if we have its password 
and its email and its ID. So they are required. And they are also only available here because it's composable. So in the controller, we don't know that a user has password and username and email. So we do it here. But the fact that we do it here has lots of issues with all the other profile uh, parts of the, the user. So there are bugs. So what I will do is um, remove the, the, the required field management from the driver, put them in the controller. Because they are required, we will put them in the controller. There is no way we can compose something with some element of comp composability that is required externally. So this thing will be put back in the controller and I will be able to call um, create user from the controller once I know that everything is good and keep in the default driver whatever is necessary like the buttons or the roles which are not required for the for creating a new user uh, and then have the other uh, driver use the user time zone so I will refactor that that's just for Jasmine who will understand but you could still have you could still have uh, user parts containing required fields they would yes. not be required yes, to yes. create a user. It would be similar to, um, yeah, yes. uh, after, you, after you refactor, it would be similar to the content manager yeah. being invoked from the content control. My only issue is that the API to create a user from ASP.NET Identity mm. requires some properties. Yeah. So these properties, I will move them managed by the controller itself. The other ones, they can have whatever they want, they will be in drivers. But these ones, they will have to be in the controller. That's sad because we like to, because we know something is composable, we like to have the controller just say, well, let's call all the parts. And one of them is the, the, the one that is mandatory you can remove or you can disable, okay? That's what we like to do. In this case, we can't because, because calling create here, create can only be called here in this case and then breaks all the other drivers. We need to call it once we have all the values from all the drivers. So this is a specific case because of ASP.NET Identity. So two properties will be handled by the controller and the view of the user and not by shapes. That's it. Uh, but the rest will be will be handled differently. That's fine. And then we won't have to do the is new here, which is fine, but well, which is nice to, to, to be able to have in driver when we call update to know that the entity is a new entity or not a new entity we can do different things for validation that's still valid like when when it's not new if you find there is already someone with the same name that's fine it's not new we expect that someone with the same name exists this is this entity but when it's new you see that that's very nice to be able to do that but in this case we need to to move some properties in the controller and I hope it will fix the issues I, we are seeing when we are creating users and with this module. Um, and also, um, just to note that it's not obvious, I will write some documentation about entities. We talked about it also on some issues and with SIP creation on the forum. Uh, user is an entity, and um, entities is a base class, that's a base interface that says, I am composable. That's it. So I have a list of properties which is a JSON document. You can extend me. Uh, and then we have the notion of driver that will apply on entities and section drivers. So you can have um, a driver for a specific set of features, section a slice uh, of, uh, of data and UI. And, um, and then you can create different types of entities. User is a type of entity. Workflow is a type of entity. It's composable. Um, export steps are a type of entity. Content item should be a type of entity because it's also composable. It has other uh, features, like I said, localization, versioning, um, versioning, localization, and some others, like content definition based extensibility also. Um, and the next goal will be to make it extensible so we can have, we can create entities that reuse some behaviors like versioning and localization. So you might want users to be localized why not? That's, maybe in this case it doesn't make sense, but Sipke was mentioning, yeah, I want workflows to be versionable, workflow definitions to be versionable, so that they can, when a workflow instance is created, it will be associated with the version of the workflow it was created with. So if you create a new version of the workflow, if you update the workflow, it won't impact the running workflows. Okay, so that might be interesting. Or maybe some other component needs to be localized, but doesn't need to be versioned. Or, or doesn't need to be composed with content types. So all these things might be, again, reusable. So we can, uh, these aspects will be 
themselves composable when you create a new type of entity like this. Um, so that, that should be nice. And just by, for instance, implementing an, an, an interface like I localizable, I versionable, uh, I content definitionable, or something like that, whatever. And then the UI for these different things will just expect the, the object that you pass to be I whatever, I localizable to, to show localized versions or to show historical versions. Um, and some APIs, like for the content items, will be specific to the content items and also expose localizability, versionability, and so, and so on in the same API. Um, because it makes sense for a content item, because we know content item is localized and versioned, and so on. So, yeah, some refactoring to do in the next weeks. Just an addendum for a topic. Questions? Uh, yeah, so um, <clears throat> activities, they derive from entity, but the, uh, they only actually use the properties uh, object of, of the entity class to store, um, well, to store properties of the okay. derived uh, activities. But uh, I'm wondering whether it would be useful. Actually, I was playing with the thought, huh, would it be useful for activities to be composable as well? And uh, right now they aren't, and maybe that is not useful. But I was also thinking that activities, they they contain data, but they also contain logic. And with uh, entities and drivers, that's separate. So the entities represent, uh, contain data, and then some logic exists in drivers. And I was just wondering if, if we would have to do something with uh, the workflow activity as well. And so basically extracting the execute method out, no. out of the activity. And then... No, I will not. The driver are just here for UI. Update, sure. display, edit, that's it. Yeah, yeah, I understand that. But I was wondering wondering if, if, if that would be a better design for uh, like, activities. So. Not, not for display, not because we already have display drivers for activities, but I was wondering if we would need the same for the execution. No, I don't think so. All right. You can have your own API like activity manager or activity service that will execute whatever it wants and that's it. Yeah, so I was thinking in, in the context of a, a composability for activities because you could then extend the activity with additional parts, but uh, it would make sense to then also execute, have some additional code that then executes. You would just have to implement a, di a different activity, I guess. Yeah. But then you will have, yeah, it's like a different type of driver that you could do if you wanted, but you will also have the, the, the problem with validation when you execute and also order of the execution. That mm -hmm. might, I don't know. I don't. I don't really think you need that because what you have done so far doesn't require uh, execution composition. Yeah, exactly. No, there's no limit. Even more, that an activity is a unit of execution. So composing a unit of execution with from other unit of executions that's called a workflow. Then you have it also. You can compose them and you can. So I don't think you need that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the fact that you don't have any property in activity, maybe that's an issue also. Maybe you should have um, default property like we have on content item. We know a content item will have a content item ID, a, 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 a owner, a created date, and so on. You don't need to create a part for that. I don't, I'm not sure. Yes. That, that, are you well, there's a base it? class. Uh, we have the activity as the root class, or okay. actually entity, and then activity, and th those could have shared properties. Uh, if, if that okay. makes sense. But. Okay. Good. Other questions? Oh, yeah, we have something. We have something new. Um, a new site on Orchard Core that has been shared with us on the, on the forum. Yeah, where are sites? Do you find here? Websites? Orchard 2. Where is that? Well, I have it in my in my brain. Uh, CA? Antoine pasted it. Thank you, Antoine. Yeah, 
Am I right? Yeah, I'm right because it's slow on the home page. They have to enable always uh, on. It's restarting the app every time. Okay. New website on Orchard Core. We have a proof because it's using a recent version, so we have the tag. Uh, we have the tag in the header, actually. So it was good. Right. Um, network, five, ah, request here, boom, headers, response, Orchard Core, beautiful. Thank you, Antoine. Boom. And uh, Oh, lots of content. You see recent news, so it's a query to display the news. In this case, it's a Twitter message. Oh, it's a link. Go back here. News. So beautiful is now using the cache tags. Currently, we suggested him to do that, and the home page is only slow because it's restarting, and that's nice. That nice. looks really good. Canadian website, good job. It's not just me. Who did it? Who who, is, who created this site? Uh, this my what is? Oh, we don't know his name. Um, let me see. Here, and I go there and I go here. His account is D miles, D miles, which means I have no idea. D miles, oh, D miles, yeah, I've seen that used. D miles, open profile. We don't know, anonymous. So, yep, yeah. we have four of them that we know of right now. I'm sure Antoine has some. Antoine, you have, you still have yours, no? Don't you? Yes. Uh, Devotees.com and AntoineGreyFarm.com. Cool. Devotees.com. I never know if. O T I Z. Yes. Repeat that. Yes. Like this. Yeah, at some point you need uh, the dub 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 to to make it work. It's noted. Boom. Beautiful. I'm sure it's an old version. Yes, it's an old version. It doesn't show the header. Antoine, you need to update. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we need more yeah. stats. We need the stats to. I also okay. called the, the Azure guys to start tracking the Orchard Core sites independently, because mm -hmm. I'm sure that right now they don't they don't track them. I like this. It's nice, beautiful. Is it a, a completely new template, or did you reuse the agency? Looks like agency. No, it's called Porto. Okay, so you completely made it. No, uh, it's a template available on Thin Forest. Well, I mean, it's not based on agency. You made the the, the Orchard integration there completely. Yes. Okay, yes. that's good. Nice, good job. Okay, that's it. No more questions. So thank you. See you next week. Bye bye. Bye. See you later, guys.